Well, I want to welcome back for another video podcast discussion, our good friend, Matt May. Thanks for taking time out on a Saturday morning to talk to us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, happy Saturday. Nice to see you again, Mark. Yeah. Now, for people who haven't seen or heard our previous discussions, could you introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your background? Sure. Uh, my name is Matthew May. Uh, I've written a number of, of books. Uh, the first one um, being from my experience with uh, Toyota. It was called The Elegant Solution, Toyota's Formula for Mastering Innovation. I followed that up with In Pursuit of Elegance, which you and I chatted about, which was sort of away from... Uh, the Toyota world, and now we're going to talk about a, a new little book um, today. So that's probably what makes sense for your audience is that I spent some time uh, in the big T. Yeah, and uh, the the new book, the Shibumi Strategy. I would hold up a copy. I'm reading it on my Kindle, which doesn't make. For it, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Me holding up the Kindle doesn't create such a good visual, <laughs> even though it is available in Kindle and, and iBook or Kindle and Nook. And Nook, yeah, yeah. Not iBooks right now? No, I don't think so. I, I don't know if there are plans or not. No, oh, okay. But the book is available now in, in both paper and, and some electronic form, and, and that may change. So I've, I've been reading the Shibumi strategy. Um, it, like I said, it's, it's a, a fable, a business story. Could you tell us a, a little bit about why you chose to write this book? Uh, what, what's the word Shibumi for people who aren't familiar with that? Okay, well, let's start there. Um, Shibumi is a, a Japanese word, uh, sort of a Zen concept. Um, there's no direct translation uh, in English. It means um, sort of maximum effectiveness with the minimum of means. It's sort of elegance, simplicity, effortless effectiveness, height of personal excellence. And I learned about the word um, by reading a novel by a Trevanian um, called Shibumi. It was a spy novel about 30, 35 years ago. And I just love the word, and it just captures something a little bit more than, than elegance does. It's sort of the next level, if you will. And I just like saying the word, too. Shaboomy. <laughs> Shaboomy. Yeah. So for a lot of the people watching or listening, uh, you know, their context professionally or, or from previous study may be related to, you know, quote-unquote lean and the, and the Toyota production system. How does what you write about in the book and, and the Shibumi concepts, how much of that would you say is drawn from Toyota and how much is drawn, you know, from Zen, uh, from, from martial arts, um, from other Eastern philosophies as, as you read about in the book from the instructor and mentor, she's a martial arts instructor. How, how does this all sort of fit together for a quote unquote lean thinker? Well, I think it's hard to separate um, lean thinking from the genesis of, of lean thinking, which is um, not here in the United States, it's in Japan. Um, and Japan is, is um, it, it's an Eastern philosophy, it's a, it's a different way of thinking. Many of the Japanese practices um, aren't limited to the Toyota world. A, a lot of Japanese uh, companies use these. So the, the short answer is it's about half and half. Mm -hmm. Um, there are about a, a half a dozen principles that everyone um, who's a lean thinker will be familiar with. Genshi Genbutsu, Hansei, Kaizen, um, Hoshin, those kinds of things. And then there are some Zen concepts um, that predate any of this that, um, and I call it the Shibumi 7, that are nuances off of this theme of subtraction, which is what Zen is really all about, emptiness. Mm -hmm. And the power of emptiness um, and the, the spirit of emptiness as being um, one with the, with the human spirit. So it's about half and half. And I chose to have a, a story format here because these are sort of tough concepts for the everyman to get. And I think a story format, a very simple short story about someone who is in a very bad way, um, is hit with a crisis, but has a breakthrough because of some of these principles is a pretty powerful story. Pretty and, powerful way of teaching, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and compared to In Pursuit of Elegance, which uh, seems to carry through a number of themes, like you said, the idea of um, addition by subtraction, if you will. Um, some of the, the real-world uh, entertainment and business examples that you used in that book. Like you said, the, the Shibumi strategy and the fable uh, format makes it very, very personal. Uh, it's very real story people can relate to. And, and so the, the main character, Andy, in the book, um, loses his job and is, is trying to find new, 
career directions. And so a lot of the context of the story is told uh, with him getting a job as a, a salesperson uh, at a car dealership. So I'm curious, the, the choice to make that uh, be the job and, and the setting for the story, um, how, how does that tie in or, or where, I'm, I'm just curious that choice, uh, where that came from. Well, um, I wanted this to be very real world. Um, and so, first of all, my experience, um, the, the character of Andy is an amalgam of a number of people I actually know. Um, and I'm quite familiar with the retail automotive um, environment, having spent, oh gosh, 15, 15 to 18 years. I, I, can't imagine, I can't remember exactly how many years it's been now, but um, since the early 90s, been involved in the automotive community. I know that environment. Um, I didn't want Andy, when he loses his job, to have a, a, another job it, it's a, because it's not real world. The economy right now is very tight. So he takes a job that really isn't a job. There's no salary. Um, there's no benefits. He has to make a go of it in a very, very short amount of time, which a lot of people are actually having to do right now. They're taking anything and make something out of it. So um, for all those reasons, um, and everyone's familiar with, I think, buying a car. Everyone has probably set foot in, in a car dealership, and, and they can un and relate to what he's going through. And one of the things I could relate to, even just from other workplaces, is I think some of the struggle through the story where Andy is now in a very you know, um, short-term driven environment, very quota driven, very, you know, damn it, get it done kind of management style, which isn't exclusive to um, a car dealership. And Andy is trying to you know, develop long-term um, right. relationships with customers and, and, and be very focused on process. And it seems so out of sync um, with that environment. Can you talk a little bit about um, that that conflict or you know trying to do things in, in in a way that's out of sync with an organization how do people kind of work through that when they when they think you know they, I know this is how I need to do it but there's there's resistance because of the predominant culture in, in this case a car dealership or in other settings yeah it, it's sort of man versus system and we're all up against that right now and and part of the message is that put a good person in a bad system and the system is going to bat last. And so you have to, and, and Andy can't sell a car to save his life. He has great plans. He's wonderful with people, but he cannot close a deal. He's about at his wit's end um, when something happens. And it allows him to view things in a new light. And it allows him to work within the system, but without sort of without the system, outside the system. Um, and it's, it's the notion of if we look at things in a different way sometimes, we can um, sync with a system no matter how bad it is. It's a matter of how do you find that entry point and how do you use some of these concepts and principles uh, to allow you to do that. Now, I don't know if, uh, yeah. I don't know if you, if you had any of that struggle when, uh, in the course of writing this book. You said, I want to write a fable. I want to write a short story. Uh, you don't have to go into that if the publisher uh, was a system you were working against uh, in terms of the format and the style of the book. <laughs> no, I, this, uh, this book actually was a very happy accident. Um, I actually wrote it um, for, for someone else um, as a personal thing, and um, he it's my agent, right? Yeah. And he, he ended up pitching it to, to a publisher and with just a little bit of work. I mean, the whole thing took me maybe um, five days and maybe, maybe 10 with editing. It was a story that um, just sort of flowed out yeah. um, in a very shibumi way. Um, yeah. Originally, it didn't have a lot of these um, Zen and Japanese concepts in it, um, but it, it seemed to be the appropriate time to do this. And there was no struggle at all um, which is interesting. And, and it turns out I really like writing in the story format, in, a, in, a, in this kind of dialogue um, fiction sort of way. Yeah. Well, that, that's, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that it, that it wasn't a struggle like Andy faced um, <laughs> in the story there. Because you do feel bad. You're going through chapter to chapter. You're pulling for it. Like, come on, Andy. You could do this. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Now, you, you did answer inadvertently. I was going to ask you, did you... Uh, feel a point of, of, of that Shibumi uh, feeling, you know, when, when you were writing the book, it sounds like you did when you said it just flowed. So how do we recognize 
or do do you just know if you hit that point in your own work of of, of having that sort of flow? I think you. I, I, good question, um, because it's exactly how I sort of introduce the concept in the first place. I think I think we all have these little moments. They may not be earth shattering moments. They might be little tremors, and our our challenge is to recognize them, as you just said. Too often we don't recognize them, or we don't try and unwrap them to see how we could repeat them. And that's really the purpose of this book, is to say you don't have to, to shake up, you don't need your, your entire life to be shaken up dramatically. What you do need to do is sort of be a little bit more attuned to these little tremors, these little shake-ups, these little insights to, I don't know, enlightenment or something, and, and make something of them. Too often we just shrug our shoulders and go, hey, that was kind of lucky, or hey, um, that was interesting, that was kind of cool, but we don't really reflect on it. And we don't try and say, well, how could I, is there a way that I could actually construct my life that I could string a bunch of those moments together and sort of pursue Shibumi as a way of life? Mm -hmm. Which is where I'm at right now. I'm just sort of looking for, for those kinds of moments and trying to um, replicate them, repeat them, and teach them. Well, so I think there's a lot of uh, really neat ideas that the book offers for people that are, you know, I think we're all trying to find that in our own uh, professional yeah. world and in our life in general. So thank you for sharing um, the, the, those ideas in the book and for talking about it today. Where, where um, can people find out more about the book? I mean, certainly they can find it on, on Amazon, and, uh, but you've got a website with videos and a bunch of other resources. Yeah, um, to Shibu, um, shibumistrategy.com um, will take you to my main site, which is matthewemay.com, and everything is sort of centered there. There'll be, a, uh, there'll be an iPhone uh, app coming out in a, in a couple of weeks because the second part of the book is a practicum. It's, it's sort of a little uh, exercise on how to use some of these uh, principles in your daily life, and a lot of people ask, well, you're going to have workshops, you're going to have something that I can carry around. I want to carry the book around all the time. And so uh, an app, a mobile way of, of referring to these things, it'll be a card-based thing, um, will be available. So um, that's how you can find it all out right there, shibumistrategy.com. Very cool. Well, Matt May, thanks for taking time to talk about your new book. And hopefully there'll be a future book we can talk about or we can just do another podcast on some other topics sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.